Okay, so just a heads up, this is a video which is going to show two different ways of making a wall disappear when you go behind it. Now, um, the first way is programmatic and I'll go through it in detail. The second way, I'm just going to give you the material and um, uh, let you adapt it if you need be. Okay, so this is the second material. I thought I would just show it before the other one so that we can so you can know if this suits your needs. So here you go, whilst we are in front of stuff, everything is fine. Now when we walk through things, they disappear. This is using the depth buffer to try and figure out uh, and then creating a mask based on um, if you are far away from the character or not. It goes all the way back to here. There are two settings that you can have on this. So I'm using the custom primitives. So the first custom primitive is here. And uh, uh, so these are data which are being fed into it from a custom primitive. So the first one is going to turn it on or off. So if I um, use that when I pass behind this, it never disappears. So if you've got wall that you never want to disappear, you can just set that to zero. And that would be the default. And the second one is if it's going to use the bounding box to if it's going to use the bounding box to, to keep the bottom. So you can see here that I've got show bottom using bounding box. So if I change this one back to one and then change this to zero, you can see that the bottom disappears as well. But sometimes it's useful to have the wall bottoms still appear so that people know where they are. So you can see like that people can understand that the wall is there so they can't go through it or and I quite like this because as you get close to the wall it sort of semi reappears again so you know you can't pass through it so lots of different things that you can tweak in that but that's the material which automatically does it and to implement this all you need to do is create uh, follow the link create the material and just copy and paste this into into it um, I might add some more text, but it should be should be easy to just copy and paste in. Um, get rid of that, 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 and that. Um, and then once you've got that set up, you any mesh that you add it to. So, for example, I wanted to drag use one of these cubes. As soon as I add the material to it, if I push plus on the custom primitive data, you can see the options that we've got. So now that block won't do anything until I change the custom the custom um, primitives. So hide when blocking the camera on one, and now it will work in exactly the same way. So it's a little bit. So it should just teeth her off at the sides. Okay. So that's how that works. Uh, next up is the video of how to do this programmatically so you've got a bit more control over uh, when it happens and the fade. Okay, thank you very much. Hello and welcome to this short video on how to create walls that when you pass behind them they disappear. So the, this is useful in this example for a side scroller where you've got a character which is going to move into a house and you want when you move in the wall to disappear so that you can see what's happening inside the house. Now there's a couple of ways of doing this but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to use mostly materials and one actor. So you'll see if I've got the level it starts like this. Now the character won't actually go behind the house at the moment, behind the when it goes behind the wall the camera shoots in and gets close to it that's because the spring arm is reacting to the the collision of the wall so in order to turn that off there's a couple of ways but what I'm gonna do is go into the third person character select the camera boom and I'm gonna turn off collision tests now um, now you'll see if I run it my character will 
the, or the camera will stay in position as I move behind things. Okay, so next up, what we'd like to have is a, um, we need to get this to disappear. Now there's a few ways of doing this. Now, what I'm gonna do is I'll demonstrate, I'm dragging one of these walls behind. So this would imitate this being a slightly larger house. Now, uh, I'll find, I'll grab a chair so that we can see the difference. So I'm gonna put a chair there and maybe a table. So that's our inside of our room. Now, um, what I'm gonna to wanna to do is control the fading of these walls. Now I have a material that I've got for the for the bricks and he, this kind of needs to be done on the material level. Now the first question is how we're going to get it to fade. Now your normal way of fading something would be to have it as transparent and then fade it out. However, transparency is expensive. As we can see here, if I was to go into um, the shader complexity, you can see that most things are green, which is good when you're talking about shader complexity. However, if I change the domain of the bricks to be translucent, okay, firstly it changes the look quite a lot, secondly everything becomes massively expensive. And bear in mind that if we are working on, if we're looking at a uh, uh, meshes that might make up a large percentage of the world uh, this can get very expensive very quickly so we don't want to use translucent so what I'm going to use I'm going to convert to something that's called masked so under masked jump on masked and again it looks exactly the same and our costs are very very low again now the problem with masked is it's binary you either exist or you don't exist. And for us to have a good transition, we want to make them fade a little bit out. Uh, so I would do that using this method. So I've got the opacity mask. Now I am going to search for a dither node. Tempor dither temporal double A. Stick that into the opacity mask. And you'll see what this does. Immediately this looks looks a bit transparent and if I apply and save you can see that all the walls look a bit transparent great now it isn't actually transparent what it's doing is it is alternating the pixels so one pixel is transparent and the next pixel isn't giving it this this dithering this dithering mode now I can control the percentage of dithering by changing the value in here. So if I put one in, for example, you can hardly see it at all. And if I put nine in, it's uh, pretty, pretty solid. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to control that. I am going to um, use a material parameter collection. I like a material parameter collection because uh, it, it reduces the amount of coding. So it means all, whenever you're inside, whenever you set a value in the material parameter collection, it would um, hide that wall full stop. So I'm going to go into material and pick a material parameter collection. And I'm going to call this material parameter collection underscore world because these are world values. Now, um, if you don't know a material parameter collection, what they are is just a list of variables or parameters. But the great thing about them is you can reference them in multiple materials. So you, you can grab this value from any material and change it there. So I'm gonna open this up and I'm gonna add in one scalar parameter and I am gonna call this internal fade. Okay, and I'm going to set that to 1 by default because I don't want things faded by default. Then in the brick, I'm going to um, search for collection, collection parameter, make sure the MPC world is found. Select in the drop down internal fade and plug that into the alpha threshold. Now apply and save. 
We can see the walls look like that. However, if I was to drag out my material parameter collection, you can see that I can make them disappear by fading out by changing that number. Okay, so all we need at that point then is something that will allow us to change that number. So, and this I'm going to use an actor for. So, if I right hand click, I'm going to create a blueprint actor and I'm going to call this BP underscore internal room detection. Detection. Okay. Now in this blueprint, I will add a box collision. And this, this is going to be my detection. So I will then right hand click on the box collision and I'm going to add two events on, on component begin overlap and an event on condition on component end overlap. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to try and detect the player character. So I'm going to use a cast. This isn't the best way to do it. If you're writing uh, an interface might, might make more sense in this case, but I'm going to do a cast to third person character. I'll duplicate that with control D down here. And again, that's the other action. Now, all I need to do now is set scalar, it's scalar parameter value, set scalar parameter value, select my material collection and select internal fade. And I'm actually going to do this from a timeline because that's going to give me a more smooth rather than a sudden fade. So I'm going to add timeline. I'll call fade in out. And what I will do is I am going to, from the component overlap, I'm going to run play. And from the component end overlap, I am going to send reverse. Now under the set scalar parameter value, I need a float. So I'm going to open up the timeline. I'm going to say that it takes um, two seconds to, to fade in now. Now let's make it one second. And I'm going to add a track, a float track. And then I'm going to add two keys, one at zero and one at one second. And the zero one, I'm going to change to value one. And then I'm right clicking and grabbing all of these and right clicking and set to auto just so we've got a bit of a smoother curve. Right. Now as I go to the event graph you can see we have the value coming out here under new track. And so what that do is that's just going to fade up and down that value. Okay so now I will test this out. Oh I haven't added it to the world. So now I'm going to add this to the world here and I will scale it up so that it fills our, our room. And now if I play, when I walk in, it fades out and I walk back out, it fades back in. And so do all of the walls that are marked as neat as uh, with this material function in it. Now we probably don't want all the walls to do this because the back wall just means the entire house disappears but it's only the front wall which is in our way. So we want a way to control it per um, mesh to see if the walls should, f f should fade in or fade out. Now this is how we would do that. In order to do this, we need to have a way of uh, switching it on and off uh, on a specific mesh. So I'll show you how you can do this. And what we're going to do is use custom primitive data. So I'll jump back into the material and I'm going to create a scalar value here. 
which I'm gonna call uh, turn on fade. Now with that selected you'll see that there is an option to use custom primitive data. I'm going to select that and keep it at zero for the time being. If you use this in multiple areas, you'll probably want to change the index and, and keep a sort of log of what they do. But this is fine for the time being. Now, um, how I want to set this is that if you set this value to one, it means it's going to use this fade. If you don't, it's, it's, going, to, it's going to stay there regardless. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to I'm going to use an if statement. So I'll drag off this and go if. And now what I want is if the I'm going to change b to 9.9. .9. So if the value is above, if a is above b, then we're going to use this temporal, the temporal AA. If it's not, we oh no sorry not b so uh, it, so if a is above b, we're going to use temporal. If it's below b, we're just going to maintain it at one. And then I'm going to plug this into the opacity mask. So I'll drag this down so you can see the whole thing. So that's just the way I have it connected up here. Internal fade. Now, what I need to do is I need to jump back into the level. And if we have a look, we'll now see that this no longer works. However, if I was to um, jump down in the details to the custom primitive data, custom primitive data, and if I was to add in one record, you see it says turn on fade, set that to one, now if I was to play, it will fade out, but the walls behind it won't. So if I do the same for this one here, add an array in, set that to one. Now what we've got is as I move into it, the whole walls will fade out. Still creates the shadow, but that will give us the effect that you're going inside a house. When you move outside, it's going to fade back in again. So it's, it's quite nice. And if we look at that through the optimization, so if I go back into um, optimization view modes, shader complexity, and press play, and move in. Or, OK, well, the shader complexity, it, it, remains, it remains green throughout. So we, that's still quite cheap. Now, as an optional thing, you...